How's it going, folks? Uh, you're very welcome to the second talk of my series of talks about my new uh, book, Rolling Story, my memoir about uh, my life. People who read the book will know that um, a good book is about education and my struggle in school. Um, I, I, I suppose I didn't get on too well in school and about the impact it had on my life going forward. So I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Mr. John Gorman, who is the current principal of Ross's Community School in County Donegal. And um, I only met John at the start of this year. He asked me up to do a talk with his school because he listened to um, a seminar that I'd done in the RDS and spoke about education. He felt that I would have a bit of an impact on the school. And when I went up and met John, I realised that he's the type of principal that I, I feel we need in the country going forward as, as, as in treats every student different and tries to find that bit of magic uh, within every child. So, John, how are you getting on? I'm good, Rory. Listen, good to, good to see you again and good to, good to be back in touch. And big congratulations on the book. It's, it's, it's fabulous. As you've read the book, you're one of the first people to read it. I made sure you did. Um, and for me, I described, especially to educate, to liberate, is the, is the big chapter about education. And, and the first line is, it is uh, school felt like a prison to me. Um, and that's probably the way I summed it up. And like, I'm not going to let on that I was good as gold. I kept my mouth, my mouth shut. I wasn't, but I wasn't a bad egg. Like, and as years went on, and I had teachers who seen the goodness in me, let me shine. But during the primary school days, like, like I often talk about the teachers writing on the blackboard and me struggling to keep up with them. And the te you know, the teacher would say, "Has everyone got this?" So I can rub off and start writing again. But I was never nowhere near her because. I was dyslexic and I struggled with, with my handwriting and, and but I didn't want anyone else in the class to realise I was stupid because when you're young, the last thing you want to be known is stupid in a classroom. No matter how big and brave you are, I was the biggest in the school. I was, you know, the good footballer, but I also had that inner inner lack of confidence. And that's why I spoke so honestly about the book and about when I have struggled in later life in jobs, I'd straight away say, I can't do this because that's what I was told when it comes to reading or, or writing or even when I worked with Republic Italian RT and they had this screen you have to read the script off and I fluttered and I couldn't read it because it, again it came flushing back to me so I suppose John that's where you come in and I know you run the school a lot different you, you, you don't believe in uh, people being expelled or suspended unless very necessary so what's your opinion on how best like to, to, to look out for these kind of misfits as, as I suppose they're called? There's a, there's a whole range of things and you know we won't deal with all of it in, the, in, the, in this session but look there's very simple things and I suppose you start back like I take you back and it's, it's very evident in the book you had teachers who did see good things in you like you, you did have but when you're sitting in the, I, I, like I taught in primary for one year, like between my current job, which I'm in for about 23 years, uh, 24 years. And that one year in primary, I learned an awful lot in the sense that A, primary school teachers have 34 kids in a room with all sorts of different needs. So like the biggest issue is class sizes are, you know, they're, they're too big. So one person to try and cope with all those needs is really, really difficult. And Teachers don't always have the supports they need. And, you know, there was a traditional way. Education was set up, really, was set up to kind of suit, the, you know, 30% of your kids. I'll correct you a wee bit. I would suspend a kid and I, would, I wouldn't probably, I would try and avoid like the plague of ever expelling a kid. But I would suspend because sometimes you have to show kids, you know, that there's a line and if you're going to keep crossing it. But when, if you have to do that, you need to figure out what motivated that. And then you have to get the arm around the kid to try and figure out, look, what, what's driving this? And, you know, a lot of times it's self-esteem. Like, you were great crack in school because it masked the fact that you felt stupid. Like, that's a, that's a sure sign. When you get somebody that's acting up and playing up, you know, it's, it's nine times out of ten, it's because they're struggling. But well, even, even just to cut you short, John, and yeah. it's funny because that's where I wanted to go into you with about everyone being different because you, you touched on it there, which again, it comes back to the leaving cert. And I won't lie, it absolutely annoys me every single uh, year, August, September comes out and, and, and TV3 and RT and all of them. 
oh, here we have Mary and John. Uh, Mary got 600 uh-huh. points and John got 600 points and here we are, the proud parents. And you, Rory, sitting at home looking at that gun. God, I, I got 300, but I actually worked hard, but now I feel horrible. And my mom and my dad, and this is an Irish tradition, uh, are, are ashamed to ring up their relations and say, oh, Rory got 300. Oh, oh really? Did, did Martin got 4, 480, did he? He's going to UCD. Oh, well done. Oh, yeah, Rory might get a job or something. And that, that has a huge impact yeah. in a young yeah. child's uh, yeah. confidence. And it happened to me, like, when I done LCA, my mom will tell you, she tried everything to tell me not to do LCA. Why? Because she didn't want to ring her sisters who their sons were doing medicine or whatever they were doing and Rory was an LCA head. Look, I suppose that's what we try to do here and look at, you know, you use wee stories and the more than yourself, you use stories to try and get into people's heads, particularly parents because like parents have very set views and it's a good thing. We, like we value education as a country, which is good, but we probably also write off some of our bravest kids and the reason we write them off is because we don't get to grips with the block. Like there's something blocking. So for you, it was dyslexia. But we, we, we've we learned to see those as deficits la- rather than skills. So if you do a psychometric test, psychological test in industry, they focus on your strengths and your weaknesses and they try to help you improve your weaknesses. Schools should be exactly the same. A guy from West Donegal saying this, and it's going to sound, it's, it's probably sound very Republican, but it's not. But Patrick Pierce actually wrote beautiful stuff about education 100 years ago. And to describe what he, the vision he had for Irish education, he used a, you know, he, he went back to the word in Irish, which is ejahas, which is what Donegal Irish probably pronounced it slightly differently. But the word edge was to foster. And ejahas, which is the Irish for education, was fosterage. And an ancient... Gaelic culture, if you were a carpenter, you were sent to the house of a carpenter to develop your craft. If you were a poet, you were sent to you know, the home of a poet and so on and so forth. And we've lost that because we stop looking at the skills and we start looking at, if you're a primary teacher with 34 kids and you have autism, you have um, dyslexia, you have ADHD or whatever, it's crowd control. and. One of the pluses of the pandemic has been, you know, the flooded uh, maybe 1,500 extra teachers and class sizes are now much, much smaller. And what would be really important that that stays after the pandemic, that we continue to fund so that teachers can work with smaller groups. And then if they see things, if they start to see wee patterns in kids, that they're open and honest with parents. And also, like, I suppose the fact is, the parents are open and honest too and not afraid because if, you, if you're in denial about certain things being there, then you can't help and support and fix it. And look, kids, uh, look, I feel kids are constantly telling us who they are, their parents, their teachers, their school. And we're the people who spend the most time with them and the parents, most of all. And unless we listen and listen carefully. And the other mistake that we probably make, everybody makes it, is that you want kids to learn from your mistakes. So you basically, sometimes we have a danger of getting them to relive our lives for them, rather than look at who is this individual in front of us. Like you, you need more of those type of professionals. Kids need more time with them to actually see, is there a block? Or look, if a kid's grandparent dies when they're in first year, that might take them three or four years to get over like a, like a, <laughs> my college life my dad died the week of my leaving cert and I spent my college life dealing with that yeah. and some of the things you talked about in the book you know I went through that because of it so like you, you need the supports in place to be able to help a kid release but it's even like you you highlight a teacher in secondary school in the community school you went to who's seen that better than you and who encouraged your football and he did that because you may or may not have noticed, but he noticed that your self-esteem was on the floor. Yeah. But he also knew that he made you captain of the team, so he knew you were a leader. So school may not have been, you know, it may not have caught everything that you needed to do. But then also remember, huge school, under-resourced, and it is down to the resourcing of it. And that's not... But you, if you're if you're set up to be looking, looking, and I suppose when teachers come in here, they're inducted, you know, simple things like there's no shouting in the building. 
And the reason for that isn't that, you know, we want it to be a monastery or anything like that. It's the adults, if they shout, it's a signal that you've lost control. And if you're not in control, how can you expect to bring the kids with you and support you? And, you know, you know, if you ask a kid in the school, what's the most important word in the, in the building? They'll answer you immediately and they'll say respect. Yeah. We also know that their teachers and their SNAs and caretakers and cleaners and everybody else have to treat them with respect, but equally they have to give it back. And it's a lot of the language in school traditionally was punitive, like it was, you know, detention. We, we and it's gimmicky, but we changed the name of detention to learning opportunity. And there was two reasons for that. Like the, the first was, if you give a kid 300 lines, what are they learning from that? They're learning nothing from it, only punishment. Punishment, yeah. Whereas if you get them to catch up on work they missed in a class because they were, you know, they were mucking about or whatever, at least you have half a chance. And then the other thing is if I send a kid home, which, which I do from time to time, it's wrapping your arm around them when they come back in and say, right, okay, you mucked up there today, but what, what was that about? And listening to them. And before you send them home, making sure that they have a fair hearing. And, and look, at kids will almost suspend themselves. Like, they, you know, in, in, a, in a culture that is positive and is kind and respectful to them and is, you know, that, as much as is humanly possible that everybody is treated as an equal and with dignity, then you have a better chance. And it, ne it nearly polices itself in, this, in that sense, because yeah. they, they set the standard then as well. I suppose above all, like, do you think like, is it like the more SNAs and all comes down to money and, and education might be able to afford it? But would you like, again, it's like the one person looking down and yeah, it's easy to keep an eye on Mary and, and Peter who are sitting there, they're top, they're getting 10 out of 10, and then there's a lad down the back flinging crayons over the room. But there's a reason he's doing that. Again, coming back to, doesn't want everyone else to think that he can't get anywhere near where Mary and Peter are. So it's just, and it's probably the reason with the conversation, John, is we want to push, push everything forward so that people get the most out of school, basically, because a lot of people do get a lot out of school and learn a lot and head off into their colleges, but the amount of people that don't get very little out of school, as you know, and leaving third year, I have friends that I know that they, could, that they could have went on to being top-class engineers, but they're just they're doing their sparks now, happy enough with that they left it in third year, but they're they're probably, if, if 10 is, is their, their full potential, they're just tipping away at seven, like, and then that comes back to what you said it is everyone has the gift, but they're not really encouraged. Like so it, again, it comes back to my big passion and importance of teachers. And that's the overall view of, of my education story in the book is how impactful, like you said, the teachers I had that that seen seen right, he's vulnerable in the classroom, he's not going well, <clears throat> but push him in that direction. And the older I got, the more like I do tell this story to kids 14, 15, as you said, some of them register, but others are sitting there going, oh, whatever. But it's only, as we know, all the now, and you're looking back when you are 25 in the job that doesn't pay well, and you're like, God, the teachers were right about me. I have amounted to nothing. Like, you know, and that's what I speak about in the book. I think, I think that's the, the piece, like, that I think you really have to know your students. Like, there's a very simple thing. I, I was involved in teacher recruitment for a wee while. The reality of it is it needs to be resourced. Look, there, there are great people that, and a lot of, most people look at my experience of teachers as if you support them, they'll do brilliant work. And if you resource them, they'll do brilliant work. And maybe just change the way we do things, like look outside education to see what they do. Like we, we would do a lot of that. I would, you know, get them to go to different types of seminars and different things, the way people do it outside. And, you know, the way they engage, and look at even when you come in, you engage kids with humor because you're good at it. And there's loads of different ways to connect with kids. And the traditional route doesn't always work. And like, if you can, it's one person in a building, look at some of our SNAs are amazing at just connecting in with the kids because it's less disciplinary, it's less, you know, they're, 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 there's more a closeness and they can guide and, 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 you know, help kids through education. So it, look, it is about resources and it's about 
given kids the kind of the, and teachers the support that they need. And I think it's there's less and less chance of you or anybody like you having the experience of it. But look, the bottom line is, and this look, educationists won't always agree with us. Like I think you have to have forms of support and testing for kids, like to test their basic levels, and then when they're not performing to those levels. There's a block and what causes that block and if it's dyslexia dyslexia is actually what practice and time and patience is actually quite easy to overcome and then you have other you know dysgraphia how you hold your pen can affect the speed at what you do things and all of that yeah. kids who are only very good who find it difficult to put it down on paper which is usually a classic sign in dyslexia should be encouraged to answer on the tape more and more. And, you know, but even the system that we have for allowing that to happen is very slow. And look, at a lot of it's down to money and resources. So it's, look, I hope we come out of the pandemic and we keep the amount of teachers we have, because if we do, that's made a massive difference. It's the training and it's, it's the level of training. The training is improving all the time. So it's getting better and better. And there's more awareness of the issues that kids have. And look, at that's ultimately what it's about. But it's, it's like, look at well-being and mental health. And both of us know, because we've been on the wrong end of it, how important that is. But again, one of the dangers that I've seen, say, particularly say in the last five years in school is that, you know, to, to, to be able to deal with that properly, look at you got the help and support that you needed by meeting the right type of professional who trained for years and years, who knew what they were talking about. So like, you know, we, we employ people here to help us out a wee bit, as well as the different agencies, because the agencies are overwhelmed. But that, you know, you have a psychotherapist who worked with CAMS for 20 years, who does work with us. You have education psychologists and that's the people you need to get to the bottom of this story and that's where the funding really comes in and in effect you know I, I, that's an area I think we have a big impact and it actually probably only costs from our resources about 10 grand a year but we we actually save a huge amount of kids from you know from going through some of the stuff you're going through because of you know if you have a certain personality type and that's coming up and coming up in reports, you're able to flag to that kid to say, well, look, you need to watch in the future because drink or gambling or, you know, any drugs or anything else, yeah. you have the type of personality that can lean. So you, there's a lot of preventative stuff that you can do, but it needs to be in professional hands and it needs to be somebody who has that. And it's the same then with the teaching. You, you need people who are wide awake to the fact that kids may struggle after struggling do you gather up the evidence to help the parents understand why they're struggling? Then do you get the professional help that helps them figure out who they are? And then it goes right back to what Pierce said, cultivate what's native to the soul, their magic, that, that piece of magic that they have, yeah. which you found out the hard way what your magic was. You know, and the thing is, look at what, what, what I think is brilliant about what you're doing with your books and your talks and look at everything else you're doing, Look, you're giving us a good laugh, but you're also allowing people to see that this, you know, that this isn't a straight road and that you can help prevent a lot of this happening, you know, by just telling your story. And something that you said that like I absolutely agree, we overplay the leaving cert in this country. Like we we should value education, but all of the different types of education are plumbers or plasterers or doctors or teachers or comedians are you know look at we're, we're creative yeah, we're, yeah. we're creative people like what one of the one of the biggest look i remember two years i interviewing for an english job teachers for an english job and discovered a fantastic music teacher and there was no music in the school now 160 kids out of 410 did study music mm. pe is a new subject only in the last two years and think about the amount of people who are mad about sport and that's not the elite athletes that's the the so guy who, people who enjoy a run around like again an hour course but it, it should be um it should be every day in my opinion the pa point of view like we we don't know most of one, once a week like and it's a lot of grand but you know w once a day because as it's proven the 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 the, the, the edge of her exercise obviously is key for young people not just for to maintain like weight or whatever but just to um for the film noggin and even 
you know, every day. But again, that, that that's probably far down the line when you realise how but important look, exercise look, is for young people. But in a very simple way, we've built into our timetable a 20 minute exercise break at half 12 every single day. And it's counted as a class. The kids have reported back that they're in better form in the afternoon because they got out for 20 minutes. And, you know, West Donegal is generally raining a good bit, but I would count on one hand the amount of days that kids haven't been able to get out in the two years since we've done it. And if, if you're not too rigid and if you're fluid, like there's loads of stuff you can do that is just basic common sense that can give but you know you would have loved that break and you're out with your mates and you're going for a walk for 20 oh, minutes yeah and you can have the crack and like the kids don't let us down in that they they go and do it and they appreciate it so like it's we we need to be more creative with what we do and when we do that but in order to do that you have to be you know you have to use resources and there's brilliant ideas amongst look at teachers who've done it for 30 years and teachers who are doing it for two years and it's a culture where you can harness those ideas and bring them out. And, you know, they know how to connect with kids if they're given a bit of leeway to do it. So if you had me um, as a student, um, how, how would you have managed myself um, if you had me during them days? It would probably take me until about third year to sort you out. Um, <laughs> but then it's also building on the strength. So, look, at I, I, you know, I already know you love your football and you're good at it. And that helps build your self-esteem. And it's kind of the conversations that happen with the teams then. They look at Rory, you're obviously very smart and you're good at football, but you struggle to write. So there's ways we can deal with that. And the first way we deal with it is we need to know what causes that issue. And that, what's really important is the kids involved in every part of that. You know, you'll see we boards around our building that have values. And look, the values... It's just a different way of telling the story and look at the very top one is respect and but but kids in this building will you know if a teacher was disrespectful they'll march straight into my office or the deputy's office or your head's office and say and they'll get a hearing and if the teacher is wrong the teacher will be told to go back and apologize now because you have to have the rule for everybody now we're yeah. all human beings we don't live by it all the time because look none of us are perfect beings so we we let it slip but at least if it's an approach and if the language, you know, you have to get rid of the language of stupid or the feeling of stupid. And the thing is, if an adult in the building calls a kid stupid or a kid calls them stupid, they are, you know, you're, you're breaking golden rules. And the yeah. it, look, at it is language. And, you know, some people will sometimes criticize this type of approach and say, you know, it's very American, it's very aspirational, but it's not as common sense. Look at a few, if you keep telling somebody, they're bad or they're stupid. They believe that. They believe it, yeah, they will. The thing yeah. is that then you drink or you take drugs or you gamble or whatever else because you you start to believe it. Yeah, the language is really, really important. We use a thing, discipline thing. Now we don't use all aspects of it because it doesn't it doesn't always work. But we use a thing called restorative practice. What what isn't about punishment is about fixing things, and it's about understanding and. It's just look at it's just a mechanism to say rather than saying and it goes back to detention. Detention is jail. Why are you in jail? Because you're a bad person. Yeah. But this isn't a jail, this is a school. So it's it's all about that approach. And the thing is you would have met that and you would also have been praised for your football. You would have been encouraged because look at you know, we would have 140 kids in a musical every year, if not every second year. But you would have shone on that because you were a bit of crack. So the, the mad character that you needed. And then you would have been, you get a taste of that. And you get a taste to say, well, I'm of some value in this school. And I'm somebody who's yeah. held up. And it's even the thing about, like, traditionally we left kids outside the classroom. So what you were doing was you were publicly highlighting this guy's trouble. Yeah. Where all of that is dealt with in private. And... You know, look, you still have to deal. Look, I, I would, look, if I hear kids swearing in the corner, I send them home. But it's not a suspension. It's just saying, look, that's inappropriate. You're losing control. There's, you know, you're 18 years of age and there's kids in here at 12. Yeah. It's just not the right thing to do. But I don't hold it against them. It's saying, look, at that's silly. Yeah. That's unnecessary. And, like, that it's not about writing office, about threat. Look, at. I have suspended in my time quite a number of kids, 
but I've rarely suspended somebody twice. And I could count probably on one hand people have suspended three times. You have to show there's a line. Look, no more than a football yeah, you team. Can't run them but, off you the but, but it, it's getting away from it being punitive and it, that it's a learning process that, you know, you're improving, you're improving. And, but it's, it's really like, goes back and go back to that thing of cultivate what's native to the soul. Every one of us, you know, we, we may, it might take us years to find out what that wee bit of magic is or the thing that we're passionate about. I have discovered that I'm passionate about education, but I'm passionate about education. There's a bit in my family DNA that explains that process. But the, the, the thing is, I worked in a fish factory and I worked with people a thousand times brighter than I was. And some of them have gone on to be hugely successful in other ways, but some didn't because education wrote them off because of blockages. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's, if, you, if, if school, teams and management and all of that, look at it that way. Don't write anybody off, regardless of background. The, the system is stacked against the underdog. Like the system is generally stacked against it. I think education has to be that. Like you have to be an advocate for the kids. And sometimes you'll disagree with parents because they're not quite listening to what the kids are saying or they have a view of this is the road they need to go down because that's the safe road, which is quite Irish. But then yet, Look at how successful Irish people have been all over the world because they have that better get up and go. They've yeah, a bit of, bit of drive in them. Like, you know, and, that's, and that's it. And the thing is, we don't tend to lie down and feel sorry for ourselves. No. You know, we, we tend to try and drive on. Um, but we took a decision a number of years ago to look at this whole thing of 85, 90% going into college. And for the last two years, we haven't appeared in the top 400 of the league table, which we were. And we would, you know, in terms of local schools and all of that. But we don't care about that because we care about people. Exactly. Care about it's people not are. about how many how many students get and 600 points out of each school. It's, it's as you said, it's having the people um, getting the most out of themselves when they leave school and having a baseline from, from, from what the school taught them, which, as you said, which is respect both from a teacher and from a, a pupil point of view, do you know? So, listen, John, you know, we are, we, we, yeah. could, we could babber all night. Um, but I suppose the overall message we want to get from, from this conversation is the importance of influence from, from the teachers, um, from principals like yourself that can run a school that, you know, that everyone is, is thought of different and known as a write-off, especially, as you said, based on coming from primary school maybe with a, with a bad reputation that yes you take on board what they said but let's let's it's like someone saying do you know Rory O'Connor oh, I don't like him at all no have you ever met him no I just heard he's not a nice fella do you know that kind of attitude like you need to well he's okay to me like and that's the way everyone needs to be is instead of listening to everyone else's opinion on a certain person so John Thanks as always. Um, keep doing what you're doing uh, above the hills. Um, no doubt there's many uh, a student, I'm sure, that will talk about your influence you had over the years. And again, um, it, it's in the book, folks, the, the Rory story. You can get it in, obviously, Eason's and any other bookstore. But I just want people um, who are struggling in school, like myself, to, to understand that, that things do get better. And for teachers and, and, and principals, you know, I encourage them to read it. Just so they see the other side of, of the fence. Um, and it'll only help them, I think, going forward. So, again, uh, thanks very much, John. Uh, we will talk to you again soon. And uh, best of luck to everyone and stay safe. Good luck. Right. Thanks, Roy.